Real love is not based on feelings, but it actually involves feelings. Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Uwen Akban. In today's video, I want to speak about real love minus lust and obsession. Love is a positive, deep affection for liking someone, while lust is seen as an inordinate affection. And lust is also a strong sexual desire. Obsession, on the other hand, is seen as an unhealthy and a compulsive preoccupation with someone. I want to delve deep into what real love really is, because everybody has an opinion on what love is. Based on social media, we see those opinions expressed, but what is real love in actuality? In the media and movies, we've seen love being portrayed with the fantasies, the trills, the butterflies, and all of that, but it's not long enough to even show us the real long-run reality of love. The truth is you cannot recognize real love when you don't know what it really is. And if you don't know what it is, you may easily accept anything that is portrayed or labeled love. So here are seven things that you need to know about real love. One, real love is not subjective. Rather, it is objective. It has a goal. Many people think love is subjective, that whatever you call it to be, that is what it is. Like everybody has their own definition and understanding of love, but real love has an objective. It is not just modified by individual bias. So what is this goal of real love? Real love should be authentic, it should be intentional, and it should be honest. And since many people do not know this, they go into relationship with pretense, faking who they are in order to impress someone that they like, whom they think they love. At this point, the person loves them back but the truth is the person is loving who they are portraying not who they are in reality when reality kicks in that they start showing who they are it will be difficult for this person to keep up with them because they will be like you've changed them on the other hand would be like I've not changed, this is who I am. But the truth is that's not who you entered the relationship with. You pretended to be someone else when you entered the relationship. And now you are here claiming to love someone and they had loved a fake version of you. Real love has to be built on honesty and authenticity. And in Songs of Solomon, the young woman advised the daughters of Jerusalem and said, Oh, let me warn you, sisters in Jerusalem, by the gazelles, yes, by all the wild Dear, don't excite love. Don't stir it up until the time is ripe and you are ready. She's trying to say, do not try to get someone to love you until you know you are ready. In order to buttress this point, what is the idea of being ready? If you present yourself to someone, there are two things involved. They could either reject you or they could accept you. But then you have to be ready to present yourself as you are, which is bring your authentic self and be intentional. If they come and they don't get to accept you, then Thankful that you be mature enough to walk away with respect. I know that the fear of rejection is real and many people do not want to go through that. But then, if you are not ready, don't try to excite love. Don't try to stir it up. You don't need to go up and try to put your best foot forward in order to impress the person to love you when you know that you are not showing your true self. You can't experience true love like that. Two, real love does not chase, but it pursues. What does it mean to chase? To chase is a kind of like a game as if it's a conquest. You know, when we have this idea of type, my type, most people love, but the person can't love them back. Most of the time, the person that is your type, to them, you are not their type because there are things you fantasized and you love about them. But when they look at you, you are not in their world of fantasy. They don't see you in the same light. That is why most people sometimes go into chasing because chasing makes you see things as a conquest that you want to win and which makes a lot of people try to use seduction through gifting, through kindness to try to buy that love. But it cannot work that way for you to find real love. Real love only pursues and a pursuit have to do with involvement which means both people are mutually involved you know this person wants you as much as you want them so now you are pursuing each other in love this pursuit becomes healthy when you take it slow and try to be certain about each other if you really want each other in your lives because the truth is you cannot pursue someone who does not want you you can only chase such a person if you still want to go for them they don't want you and you're going after them, that's chasing. Those people that chase end up getting the person, yes, they do. They can chase and then win the conquest of winning the person's love. But then it will not build up to a real love because you have to keep chasing in order to keep that love burning. And if you stop chasing and feel like I've won the war, 
then that's where the relationship ends. And I feel like that's where most people make mistakes. Three, real love is not built on erotic love, but on pure friendship and unconditional love. The agape love is the unconditional love which is you just love the person for who they are. It's not based on what they have done or what they portray. You just love this person. Filial love is that friendly love that you just have this attraction towards this person. But the eros can't be the only thing you build a relationship on. If it's a godly relationship, you cannot build it on the eros. The eros can only come in after the commitment in marriage. But then you can build a true relationship on pure friendship and unconditional love which means at that point you can give yourself enough time to be honest if you really want this person if you really like this person because you checkmate the character and the attitude and know if i can accept this erotic love only promotes lust and obsession outside of the boundary of marriage that god has put sex you can build a relationship based on that and honor god in the process someone that is lustful and obsessed with you can tell you they love you but it's only them that understand what they mean when they say, I love you. Amnon, the son of David, was obsessed with his sister. And then he said he loved her. But in his heart, it was just lost and obsession. Sometime later, this happened. Absalom, David's son, had a sister who was very attractive. Now, that's the thing. Erotic love is based on just the physical, your attractiveness. Her name was Tama. Amnon, also David's son, was in love with her. Amnon was obsessed with his sister Tama to the point of making himself sick over her. And that's what obsession is, which is this compulsive preoccupation with someone and lust, which is that strong sexual desire. And the truth is that can be real love. Real love, you see someone who is attractive to you, but then you make steps to be intentional to know this person, to build a strong, good friendship. And then you want to build it on unconditional love. You do not have to go to this person and say, give me sex to prove that you love me or give me this or do this to me to prove that you love me. Number four, real love is built on reality, not fantasy, which is I'm seeing you, I get to know you, and then I love you because I want you. Of course, before you meet the person you get to love, you have met other beautiful and handsome people. So now the reality of the situation is what exactly is the thing that makes you love them because you can't come and say no i just love you i don't really have a reason there should be something something unique about this person that you did not see in other people who were also beautiful and attractive something about their character something about their attitude something about their mindset and perception to life that captures your heart and you say this is the reason i love you if you don't have that then you are building that relationship on a fantasy that's just in your head it can't be based on real love five real love is a risk <laughs> i know that point is really hard in order to portray this you should know that if you are going to love someone truly you want to be vulnerable with this person you don't want to hold anything back you want to present yourself just as you are to tell them about the things you've been through the things you're struggling with and just about everything that comes along but the truth is vulnerability is a gift and can be abused since love is a risk that should call your attention to be very careful because this part of being vulnerable can really put you in trouble. It's like you are giving someone a weapon and now you are counting on them not to use it. So you give them a loaded gun and you are counting on them not to pull the trigger because that's what it is. I'm being vulnerable to you. I'm telling you my heart. I'm not hiding anything. That's what happened in the case of Samson. Delilah kept telling Samson, you don't want to tell me where this is your power comes from. You don't love me. You don't love me. And then Samson actually told her everything. But that was the end of Samson. Should that make us not become vulnerable? No, because when you remove vulnerability from a love relationship, you are withdrawing from that relationship the very vital key to make the relationship thrive. A real love relationship can only thrive on the wings of vulnerability, transparency, honesty, and openness. In Samson's case, it was just a one-directional love. And that is why since you know love is a risk or real love is a risk, you should take the time, know that this thing is mutual. We do this together. We are in this together. We are bonded. You can't buy love by loving more. You can only attract that love if it's already there. You can't buy love through kindness. You can only enhance the love through your kindness if it's already there. You can't trade sex for love. That's inconsequential. Songs of Solomon says, The fire of love stops at nothing. It sweeps everything before it. Floodwaters can't drown love. Torrents of rain can't put it out. Love can't be bought. 
out. Love can't be sold. It is not found in the marketplace. You need to be aware of that. But then I will still tell you, real love is a risk. And you need to be careful because it is captivating. It is intoxicating. Six, real love is secure but can be jealous. You know, there's a healthy part of jealousy with security in love. Yeah, I said jealousy with security, which is I'm jealous but I'm secure. Because an insecure person who is jealous can take it overboard. Even the Bible says that the Lord your God is a jealous God. Let me read that portion. Do not worship any other God for the Lord whose name is jealous, is a jealous God. You don't want to get to love someone who is cheating on you. You don't want to get to love someone who has another lover. No, no, no. You can't just say, I don't care. The act of being unconcerned and callous means you don't really love the person. Because if there's real love between you and someone, you can't even joke with the aspect of allowing them to just do anything they want to do, even when it hurts you. You won't want that. It's not pleasant. So there's a part of jealousy that is attached to True love. It doesn't have to be critical. It should be clean. Number seven, real love is pure. There is purity and peace that exist in real love. Real love is not based on feelings, but it actually involves feelings. You can't put feelings out as to say, no, I love them. But no, I don't really feel something. Are you serious? It involves feeling, but feeling is not the foundation for it. It's actually something that should be intentional because you can actually awaken the feeling if the intentionality is there, if the honesty and vulnerability is there. Because if someone comes up to you, they are vulnerable with you, they are honest with you, they are transparent with you, and you accept them for who they are, you can awaken those love feelings. But then, the scripture wants you not to stir up love if you're not ready. If you're not ready to come up open, if you're not ready to come up honest and vulnerable with someone, don't stir up love. When you awaken love, it can be so intoxicating. And then, it can be so personal. So when you talk about how pure real love is, it means you really know why you love this person. Because it is clean and clear to you. It's so vivid. It's not something that is vague. No, I don't really know why I love them. Why am I loving them like this? You should check your heart so that it wouldn't be an obsession. You should check your heart so that it wouldn't be that you are lost it. Because there is purity in real love. Let me read what this young woman in Songs of Solomon said. If you ask me why I love him so, oh bright to be, it's because there is none like him. To me, that's personal. It doesn't mean that this person is perfect to everyone, but to you, there's something unique about them. They are one in a million. There's just nobody that you've met, at least yet, that measures up to this person. Everything about him fills me with holy desire. Now, that's where the purity is. You just feel like this thing's clean. This thing's pure. And you're not trying to mislead each other. You know the direction which you are moving towards. You know where you are going with this person. And you know what you want. And now, he's my beloved, my friend forever. I hope this video has been helpful and beneficial to you. If you love this video, give it a thumbs up. Share this video to others. And meet me in the comment section. Let me know what you think real love is or what you know about real love don't forget to subscribe to this channel see you in the next video i pray you find real love bye, -bye.